Thanks for joining Pool Elementary. And today, as you can see, we have another green pool. It's swampy green. We can barely see the shallow end. Uh, it's filled with evergreens and pine needles. And uh, we just opened this one up. It's uh, one week before Memorial Day. And that's kind of it. We've had three weeks of temperatures in the 80s and 90s. So with that safety cover letting light through and the warm temperatures, it's perfect for a pool to take off with an algae bloom. So today we're going to show you uh, how to super chlorinate um, an algae bloom pool like this and get it blue in 24 hours. The first step we're going to do is we're going to want to clean and muck out all the leaves and gunk that's in the bottom of the pool with a net. I recommend one of these leaf nets with the scoop on the bottom. Um, you can gently rub these along the bottom of the pool and it sweeps up the leaves right into the net. It worked pretty good and it also has a deep body on it so you can get more out at one time. Uh, the next step before we do anything uh, with balancing the pool is we want to check our cyanuric acid levels. Um, cyanuric acid is basically added to pools and a lot of the different chlorines uh, to protect the chlorine from UV rays. The right amount in the pool does a great job on keeping the chlorine in the water longer. Um, it's almost like a sunblock. But if you do get too much cyanuric acid levels uh, in the actual pool, it uh, has a reverse effect and it ends up taking more chlorine to actually sanitize your pool. The perfect uh, amount of cyanuric acid in your pool is anywhere from 30 to 60 parts per million. And that's kind of it. If you test your water and you're somewhere uh, in the upper 50s, it's probably best to drain the pool now uh, a couple feet and get some fresh water in there and bring that cyanuric acid level uh, back down to 40 or so. If you do end up needing to drain your pool and you don't have a sump pump or a trash pump, check out our how to drain your pool video. It shows you how to drain your pool with your own pool equipment. The first step we're going to do before we add any chlorine to this pool is we're going to balance it. We want our pH uh, somewhere between 7, 4 and 7, 6 and we want our alkalinity between 80 and 120 parts per million. And what this is going to do is this is going to make sure that our chlorine that we're putting in is as effective as possible because we're going to super chlorinate this and we don't want to be wasting money. So the first thing we're going to do is check our pH. So I'll add five drops of fennel red. We'll go ahead and give that a stir up. And as you can see by our comparator, that our pH is fascinatingly right on. So we're right at about 7.5 on this actual pool. So we'll go ahead and check the alkalinity on it. And like I said, we want that alkalinity to be uh, between 80 and 120 parts per million. In this situation and in this video, uh, the chlorine we're going to be using today is going to be a Cal Hypo product. Uh, so this chlorine's Calcium hypochlorite, um, this one's 68% chlorine. Um, they do have other ones that are 73, like uh, BioGuard Burnout. Here's a shot of another product, and this is the BioGuard Burnout, and this is actually 73% chlorine, so it's a little stronger, um, but they both are effective. Here's an example of some bargain Cal Hypo I found at a local hardware store. It only has 52% Cal Hypo in it. So in the long run, the money you're going to save on cheap shocks, you're going to end up having to use more in the long run. And with uh, Cal Hypo, it's not a quick dissolving chlorine. So um, I always pre-dissolve it in a bucket, um, one pound at a time, and add it to the pool. Most of your shocks and instructions on the chlorine is going to tell you to add one pound per 10,000 gallons. Um, when your pool's like this, a good rule of thumb to either double or triple your actual chlorine that you're going to put in it. In this one, I'm going to drop a super chlorine bomb. We're going to triple the actual chlorine to get all this algae killed and make sure we have enough in there to do the job. With a bucket, go ahead and add the water to the bucket. We always want to add our chlorine to water never water to the chlorine. I'm definitely gonna put some rubber gloves on before handling any of this stuff. And uh, you should wear gloves, eye protection, whatever you need to prevent you from getting hurt by adding this, because chlorine's no joke, it gasses, and you don't want it on your skin. And each one of these scoops is about a pound and a half, so we'll go for it by adding it to our bucket of water. So there's a pound and a half. And we'll go ahead and mix it up gently. We don't want it splashing all over us. As you can see, I've got a broken uh, ladder step here. Works good for stirring. So we'll go ahead and stir up real good. And with that, we're just gonna wanna 
evenly distribute it around the pool. Here's six pounds. Here's nine pounds. <laughs> and yeah sometimes there's mistakes i lost the bucket so let's fish that out <laughs> things happen all right we've distributed 10 pounds of cal hypo by uh diluting it first in water and add it to the pool um it's taken us about oh 10 15 minutes to do that and as you can see this pool went from an algae dark green to almost like an emerald green so as you can see it's already starting to bleach out all of that algae and it's starting to give us that more blue color so uh, definitely this pool is going to be blue within 24 hours it's because we triple dose the chlorine so now that we got all the chlorine in the pool we're going to go ahead and go around and sweep all the surfaces and get all that algae up into the water so that way our chlorine that we added can uh, hit it from all different sides and angles and make sure it kills it good start by brooming our walls down with our walls brush go ahead and start from the shallow end here and start sweeping it down to the deep end and whatever settles down there will vacuum out to waste another thing to remember when you're actually trying to clean this pool up as quick as possible is make sure you watch your pressure gauge on your sand filter or your cartridge uh, filter this one when it was clean started at 10 pounds so when this gets up six to eight pounds we're going to backwash or clean our filters out to ensure that we're getting good circulation and that we're getting the stuff out as quickly as possible the other thing is we want to make sure we're knocking it with as much chlorine as possible so that's it if you have one of these chlorine feeders you're going to want to fill this also we're going to add three inch tablets to this feeder which is a trichlor product so and that's it with these tabs being a low ph like that um, that's another reason why uh, a lot of people don't recommend putting them in the skimmers because you're pulling that acidic water in through your actual equipment um, and that's it, it could corrode uh, copper exchangers on your heaters and other things whatnot um, some people do it and never have an issue so it just depends on what your water flow is and that's kind of it if you're curious and you do put these in your skimmer you can always shut down your system take your pump lid off and actually test the ph in there and that's going to tell you what your ph is running through your equipment one more tip on this um, as you can see it's a real overcast day here um, it's cool out and that's it you want to add your chlorine uh, at the coolest part of the day um, i recommend doing it in the evening sometime after seven um, and that's it so this fresh pool it doesn't have a lot of cyanuric acid in it yet nor does the cal hypo product have any cyanuric acid which is your stabilizer to protect it from the uv rays so you want a nice overcast cool day or you want to do it in the evening because if you do this in the morning and then you have a super hot sunny day um, that sun's going to cook off a lot of your chlorine and uh, you're not going to get the bang for the buck so another thing is is um, unless it's a safety precaution we're going to leave these ladders out until we actually get this algae dead because if we put them in now that algae likes to get up underneath here and it's really tough to get out of there so we don't want to actually give any secret spots for that algae to grow for now we're going to check out this pool tomorrow and uh, we'll see you then okay we're back it's been about 26 hours um, as you can see the pool's a beautiful blue uh, it's still a little cloudy and hazy but uh we can uh make out the main drain just barely but i can see it which is uh, a big accomplishment compared to what we had yesterday all the darkness on the bottom which is the debris that's still in the pool and uh we can see the shallow end super good and make out exactly what's down there okay so before we do anything to the pool uh we gotta check the equipment uh like i said it's been 26 hours running non-stop and as you can see 
Our filter pressure started at 10. She's up to almost 28 pounds. So she's 18 pounds up. That's over twice what I like to actually backwash. So, and as you can see from the pressure, it's actually leaking out of this top O-ring gasket on the top of the filter. So we know that pressure is high. We need to backwash this immediately. So we'll go ahead and backwash this filter. and uh, get her cleaned up. We'll go ahead and give her a rinse just to get uh, all the fluff and junk. Dirty water out of the filter so we're not blowing it back into our pool that we're trying to clear up. And that's it, that sight glass is nice and clear. So we know our back wash is complete. Our filter's clean. And that's it, we'll put her back to filter. Um, I did clean out my skimmer baskets uh, before I did this because they don't have weirs. Didn't want all that junk going back in the pool. As you can see, our filter pressure is back down to about nine pounds. So, good to go. So now that our filter's clean, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna vacuum this whole pool out um, to waste, sending everything that's on the bottom of the pool out the backwash line. It's the best way to do it is just to get it completely out of the pool. And then from there, we'll go ahead and balance the pool, uh, check the pH, do all that number, and then uh, we'll hit it with some chlorine probably. And we wanna make sure our chlorine levels are somewhere between three and five parts per million, just to make sure if there is any algae in this pool still, that there's enough chlorine to kill it and do the job. Here's a little tutorial on uh, how to vacuum the waste if you have a sand filter. Uh, you're basically gonna set your sand filter to waste. And what this is gonna do is bypass the filter. It's gonna send whatever we're vacuuming in right out the backwash line and get it out of the pool. Another thing is you're gonna wanna shut off uh, any of your suction lines um, that you're not using to vacuum. So this one's the drain, so we'll close that off. And then we're gonna use the south side skimmer so we'll go ahead and turn off the north side. So all we have open is the south side skimmer on the pool. So we have total suction on there and then it'll send it right out the backwash line. Um, we are gonna lose some water. So you're gonna have to probably fill a few inches of water in the pool. Um, but uh, there's no better way to get rid of that uh, crud out in that pool than to send it out to waste. So we'll go ahead and give it a quick vacuum. If you need a quick tutorial on how to vacuum your pool manually, check out our how to vacuum a pool video. It's in the description box. So normally I use a, one of those skimway vacuums over top of the actual skimmer basket to collect all this. So that way I don't have to clean my pump basket all the time. I can just pull this out. But as you can see, these uh, skimmers are square. So I'm gonna have to uh, mainline it and just be careful that I don't suck up too much at one time and plug this line up. But uh, that's it, we'll be able to vacuum. And then as soon as we start losing suction on the actual vacuum, we'll have to go ahead and shut the system down and uh, actually open up the pump, take the basket out and clean out all the uh, debris. I'm sure it's gonna be completely full of these evergreens uh, within a few passes once I get down to that deep end. But uh, we got most of it out in the shallow end because we could see yesterday with our leaf net. As you can see, it fills that pump basket up pretty quick. So. so we just tested our pH and our free chlorine. And as you can see, our uh, pH did drop down. It's about 7.2. And then our uh, free chlorine test over here on this side is barely pink. So I would say we're, uh, oh, about a half a part per million. So we're gonna wanna bring that back up to at least three parts per million. After testing our water, we know our pH is down to about 7.2 and we want to bring it back up to 7.5. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of a pH increaser to do that. Um, but also uh, our free chlorine is now uh, less than a half a part per million. Uh, we left yesterday and it was about 10 parts per million. So I think I'm going to go ahead and double dose uh, the pool with uh, Cal Hypo again, adding uh, two pounds per 10,000 gallons. So we'll put in a little bit over six pounds 
Um, with the Cal Hypo, it does have a higher pH. So instead of adding a full pound of uh, pH increaser or a pound and a half to get to 7.5, I figure I'll just put in about a half a pound and let the uh, Cal Hypo with the high pH actually bring it the rest of the way up to 7.5. The only other product I'm gonna add besides the chlorine and the pH up is a little bit of a clarifier. Um, that should speed up the process and uh, hopefully we can see the drain completely tomorrow and uh, this pool should be uh, pretty much crystal clear in another two days. That brings us to a wrap for day two. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all my stuff, call it a day, and we'll see you back tomorrow for day three. If you're looking for a speedier way to go from green to clean, check out our green to clean in 48 hours video. We've helped thousands of viewers go from green to clean in 48 hours using the shock and flock method. Day three, it's been just a little over 48 hours. And we're uh, gonna get inside here and check out this pool. Let's see how we did. And as you can see, we can see everything on the shallow end. She's still a little hazy. At this stage, um, we're definitely going to go ahead and vacuum out to waste everything we can see. And this is going to allow um, all of our chlorine to focus on what's in the pool that it needs to kill rather than organic debris and stuff that's fallen in here over the winter. So um, I like to vacuum every chance I get uh, what I can see to make this pool clear up as fast as possible. So with that, we'll do a quick vacuum to waste. Um, we're going to backwash the filter. We're also going to check the chlorine, make sure there's at least three parts free chlorine in the pool and we'll balance it also. That's not bad for 48 hours. This pool was green and gross. Hey there, we're on a day four, 72 hours. Pool's looking great. Um, it still is hazy, but uh, we can definitely make out the main drain pretty easily. Uh, we can see everything on the bottom, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, vacuum one more time to waste and uh, get the rest of this stuff out of here. And uh, tomorrow this pool should be pretty clear and it'll have a minimum vacuum again and uh, we should be good to go. Um, if this pool was still uh, really cloudy and I still couldn't really see the main drain on it, I would probably go ahead and use some type of a filter aid. Um, this is Sparkle Up. This is what I use since we're a BioGuard dealer. Um, and it's basically just uh, cellulose. And what you do is you mix up a cup or two of this, depending on your filter size, and uh, into some water solution and uh, dump it down the skimmer. And what this does is uh, allows a uh, fine layer of the cellulose to form on the top of your sand filter or your cartridge filter. And it helps pick out this really small particulate that's uh, creating this hazy water. Um, sometimes uh, the stuff in the water that's making it hazy is so small that most sand filters won't take it out. So with a little help of some cellulose, it does a pretty good job. Um, a lot of other times, uh, if I'm on day four or five and the pool's just not clearing up and it's actually staying the same cloudiness as it was the day before, um, I go ahead and use this cellulose uh, product to help that filter out. So we'll go ahead and give this a uh, manual vacuum to waste and uh, I'll swing by here tomorrow. It's Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. And uh, with any luck, this will be pretty clear um, and we'll be able to fire up this heater so they can use it this weekend. All right, it's Saturday morning. We started this pool Tuesday afternoon. Um, it's been uh, just about 89 hours. And as you can see, it's looking pretty good. So um, there still is a little bit of haziness to the actual pool. But uh, as you can see, we don't even, since we vacuumed yesterday, we don't even need to vacuum it. It is looking marvelous. I would imagine uh, the bit of haziness that's left. I mean, I can see the main drain and I can also see the screws on the main drain. So, I mean, we're pretty much there. I would imagine the haziness we do have is pine pollen. And I know that this traditional sand in this uh, sand filter has a hard time with pine pollen. And uh, as you can see, we're in Hellgate uh, Canyon in Missoula and we are surrounded by pine trees and mountains. 
and we also have a river that's just about at flood stage just a hundred feet over that house right there so it's just on the other side of that before that actual mountain ridge right there so we do get all of the elements when it comes to pollens and stuff getting into this pool and just to give you an idea how much pine pollen we get down here next to this pool this is the road just outside of our pool and uh as you can see, the road just from these rainstorms is completely covered with this stuff. And you can just see how powdery this stuff is. So I suspect that has a lot to do with why we're still hazy. So as you can see, this pool's looking pretty marvelous. Um, I have no doubts that this pool will be cleared up in the next 24 hours. Um, we did go ahead and check everything chemical wise. Um, and that's it. We do have five parts free chlorine. I left here last night with about five parts free chlorine. So I know that everything in this pool is dead and uh, that's kind of it. We won't even uh, shock it today, um, but I will add a little bit more clarifier. I add a little bit of clarifier every two to three days. Uh, if you overdose this, it does make the pool cloudy. So make sure you follow the instructions. And then um, I'm going to add an algae inhibitor just as a maintenance. Um, you don't really need to use any algicides or algae inhibitors if you keep your chlorine levels where they need to be. But uh, with this pool, we only do a route on it once a week. So if it gets a heavy bather load, the chlorines can fall below one part per million. It just, it's just a little bit of a, like it says, a backup. Um, we'll add a little bit of pH increaser. The pH was 7.2. And I would imagine that's just from uh, the bit of uh, pine needles and stuff that are floating on the top. They're acidic. And then we also have um, a chlorine tab feeder going and like I said those chlorine tabs are about 4.2 on the pH scale so the more we use of that uh, the lower the pH is so it's just kind of a constant thing when you use tabs is adding a pH increaser. And a few more things we'll do is we'll backwash the filter clean the hair basket out in the actual pump to make sure that's clean and then I'm going to go around and I'm also going to brush all the surfaces again scrub underneath those ladders and stuff uh, we did have to put the ladders back in for a safety precaution during this whole situation because uh, if uh, one of these kids or something came in here this pool is pretty tough to get out without the ladders and that's it I might pull these ladders out and actually scrub them with a one part bleach to four parts water just to make sure there's no algae on them um, it tends to get underneath those steps and it's hard to get out thank you for watching our green to blue in 24 hour video I hope you enjoyed the ride along during this uh, journey for us here over the last four or five days um, if there's any questions you can go ahead and leave a comment and uh, I do have other instructional videos on green to clean that are a lot more informative and more of a lengthy video so that's why I didn't get too detailed on this but uh, all those are in my description box make sure you hit that like button and uh, subscribe so that way you have an easy way to get to all of our informative pool care and repair videos and we do put out new videos at least once a week so uh, go ahead and join us it's free and Thanks for watching. And as always, another happy pool with Pool Elementary. <laughs>